Hello and welcome. I'm Hamish Firth, Director of Mount Hobson Group. We're a resource management or town planning company. In short, our job is to apply for and obtain resource and subdivision consent, liquor licences and all the other paperwork you need from Council. In this video we'll discuss the Auckland Unitary Plan and how you may be able to profit from it. The Auckland Unitary Plan is the rule book that provides for the ongoing development of Auckland. That may be in the CBD, where 100 metre high buildings are proposed, to small shopping areas, residential developments in the suburbs, or the management of our rural, coastal and wetland areas. The Auckland region is vast, spreading from beyond Wellsford in the north to and including Pukekohe in the south. It is home to 1.5 million people, with another million expected in the next 30 years. So let's take a look at the places that the proposed 400,000 new homes may go throughout Auckland in accordance with the unitary plan. The council has provided three main residential zones that allow for development and a future urban zones. These are the same all over the Auckland region. The first of these zones is the mixed housing suburban. This zone is coloured yellow on the unitary plan maps. It may allow for two level townhouses and terraces, retaining a suburban feel. An example of this zone in action is the recently completed development in St John's, where four terraced houses replaced one house on a 750 square metre site. Mount Hobson Group obtained consent for four new dwellings and a subdivision around at 16 Howard Hunter Avenue St John's. Under the Auckland Unitary Plan, the site comes under the Mixed Housing Suburban Zone. The second zone is the Mixed Housing Urban Zone. This zone is coloured brown on the unitary plan and provides for three level town and terrace houses. Often located on main roads, this zone provides a higher opportunity for more density on transport roads. Let's take a look at an example. 29 Wharf Road, Te Aratu Peninsula. Mount Hobson Group applied for resource consent to construct six units on this site. 29 Wharf Road comes under the mixed housing urban zone with a site area of 675 metres squared. The third zone is the Terrace House and Apartment Zone. This zone is coloured orange on the unitary plan maps and allows for four to six level apartment buildings. It's usually located around shopping or employment areas. This is the zone with the most intense redevelopment potential and where we're going to see the most significant change to suburban form. An example of this is 11 Payora Street, Oraki. Mount Hobson Group obtained resource consent for the development of a five level plus basement apartment building. The site was previously occupied by a single level dwelling. 11 Payora Street comes under the residential terrace house zone and was 900 square metres. The Future Urban Zone. The Future Urban Zone is coloured bright yellow on the planning maps and is usually located on the outside of existing residential areas. These areas will see the conversion of mainly rural land to residential. These will be rolled out in a timed manner over the next 20 to 30 years. Drury is an example where a whole new town is proposed, which will be bigger than Napier once completed. Land in this area needs infrastructure and a plan change before it can proceed. For more information on the Auckland Unitary Plan, please email us at info at mhg.co.nz with your details, and we can send you a copy of the Auckland Unitary Plan Guide, which will tell you more about how you can develop your property and what may happen in your area.